Hi there. In the previous lecture, we talked about six different concepts. And now this is the time we are going to learn about high availability. So in this lecture, we're going to learn more about high availability. If you want me to define what exactly the high availability, high availability is uh, something which is acceptable with a continuous performance. That means uh, despite of a temporary workload fluctuations or maybe something goes wrong, uh, in that situation also you have the continuous performance. So that's the um, that's how I can define high availability means. Now let's have a consideration of what exactly the data center uh, redundancies. So when you talk about the data center redundancy, uh, when they are trying to design the data center redundancy, they take they uh, will consider about the power failures, cooling, uh, networking, uh, for example, uh, multiple internet. Uh, service providers that's ISPs and the different cablings all together for each rack so they would consider all these kind of data center redundancies and also uh, we have some something called availability zones and uh, region redundancies before I talk about anything further I think you know I just gave you what exactly this high availability and data center redundancy in general now let's jump into a uh, more specific to Azure so if you see uh, or if you go to the Microsoft uh, web link called um, region so let's understand about what exactly the Azure regions so this is the Microsoft uh, global architecture you see here this is the world map within this there are 55 regions what they talk about and they have more than 140 different countries uh, their data centers are uh, their uh, they are exist so when you actually look at your different uh, colors different symbols are there if you just you know scroll uh, let me zoom it for you and you see here there's available regions and announced region and there's something called availability zone so now we need to talk about uh, what exactly this geographic and availability zones in a minute but before jumping into that let's understand what happens so when they talk about a region, so within that region, at least three different data centers they will have. Let's have a look on it, for example, uh, on India. India is one of the regions. So if you look at here, within this, they have South India as well as the Central India. In case of one, uh, once failed, uh, maybe in South India, it will fall back to Central India. I mean, if at all, if you're created a services, uh, in such a way to work right so you need to consider the region failures also let's go back and understand about one more time about region what exactly region a region is uh, within this if you see here the total regions are only 55 whereas uh, when you go back to other cloud service provider they differentiate as a something else but microsoft talks about a region means it's a set of data centers uh, it's not one okay it's it's more than one definitely a different set of uh, data centers deployed within the uh, low latency actually uh, or within within the there's no latency kind of thing uh, they would you know uh, define and they would uh, perimeter and they would connect it within the dedicated regional low level uh, latency network so that's called a region that means um, let's see uh, West US might have located uh, one data center in one region and another data center uh, maybe close to maybe 150 miles or somewhere another data center if something goes wrong within this region also you would have another uh, data center is which is up and running that means the business will work as it is for you so that's called region now any other provider uh, when you compare with either Google or AWS Microsoft has more regions altogether let's understand some more terminology on specific to Azure uh, global design or architecture so if you just go back to uh, one of my slides here uh, we talked about the region region is a set of data center deployed with the latency uh, defined 
within the latency defined perimeter and connect to three dedicated regions with a low latency network. We talked about it. And Microsoft has um, at least the Azure is generally available in 52 regions worldwide with a plan of announcing uh, for three more additional regions uh, as on recording of 2020 January. Now, we wanted to understand about what exactly the geographic so geography is a uh, the secret market that means uh, it's more about the data let, let me show you that uh, practically typically it's containing two or more regions that means not just one region you have more than one region uh, and that uh, preserves the data residency and complaints model so when they go for the complaint certificate by showing for the auditors so they talk about this boundary lines for the data where it's gonna exist so a geography allows customers uh, with specific data residency and uh, complaints needs to keep the data applications close so they don't want to you know put it into uh, maybe uh, Canadian government data into US they don't want to do it so they would um, create the region and all the data will be in that specific region so let me show you what I'm trying to talk on this with uh, more examples so if I just go back here you see here uh, you have more region like region 1 and region 2 so at this point of time you can check out the region 1 and region 2 and these two data centers so within these you have different data centers availability zones availability sets uh, on vms all that so i have not uh, talked about availability zone and availability set i'm going to talk in a minute but consider this is one region region 2 they are gonna uh, will be a data residency within that boundary for the compliance and auditing purpose now we'll talk about the availability zone so when you talk about the availability zone a physical separation location within the azure region each zone is made up one or more data centers so when we talk about uh, uh, more for example it works uh, with more independent of power and cooling and networking because one availability zone goes down other one will be already available for the customers to run their mission critical applications within the high availability and with low latency replication so let's take on one of the example how availability zones are benefit for us let's say you have the availability zone one and two and three so you have three different availability zones in one region called region one so so what is a region region is uh, 55 different worldwide regions we have when you try to create so whatever you see here as the blue so these all are the regions so what would happen is uh, within this region you have three different availability zones that means they are fully independent data centers uh, that means they are independent with the hardware and the power supply and the internet for example one line goes down or one state uh, central power uh, goes down also other region is already available for you so it's not the case because you know when they design the data center they would uh, pull a different uh, different states power uh, all together so in case one major power grid goes down other grid will be already available for that data center similarly uh, for the internet and other cabling but in case if the entire availability zone one goes down that is a complete data center goes down another availability zone is available so within that there is a more than one um, is available so you have the uh, availability uh, within that region so in other way uh, if I try to talk about more on a different slide so let me go back to this slide this would explains to you more uh, let's see it's a single VM when you try to create this VM my what Microsoft Office is 99 point four nines availability but when you talk about the availability sets so when we talk about the availability set uh, there's a difference between availability zone and availability set so let me show you what exactly uh, availability set for you so if you see an availability set is in a logical grouping uh, capability for isolation of vm resources uh, when it's a isolation of uh, vm resources what exactly vm is vm is required uh, definitely power and uh, that means a physical service will be isolated let's say you know um, 
let's you let's read you know more about it so when as you create that vm when you place in a availability set so when you're trying to create a vm you have an option to put it into availability set say let's say that's a one of the mission critical uh, sql database server and you wanted to put it into availability set so what would happen so when you place that it's going to uh, uh, create more than one computer uh, in the background and it puts into a different physical servers and different uh, computing racks altogether different storage units different network switches altogether so in case of any of the hardware or physical things goes down as a Microsoft Azure or maybe any for that matter any of the cloud service provider would you know give you more uh, more availability so in this case it's more about we are talking about Azure so Microsoft gives uh, the, the there's not going to be any of the you know uh, failure so either a hardware or the software failure happens only subset of your VMs are impacted and overall solution stays operational for you so because uh, you have the similar cloned one which is already available somewhere else or or on different rag different physical server so it's taking that uh, sql database load so that's all about the availability set so we talked about uh, single vm instance specific we also talked about availability sets so these are the availability uh, sets so which are gonna place more than one different rags and different physical servers so you have outside representing as only one machine but in the background there would be more than one machine so uh, if one goes down other one would be always available for you as a front end and now when we talk about the availability zones we talked about the availability zone say so June is like uh, we talked about by showing that Microsoft uh, article or Microsoft link so this is how it's gonna uh, show you as the availability zone so this is where you're gonna get it 99.99 percentage uh, in terms of the VM SLEs now when we talk about a regional base this is almost uh, impossible to lose unless there's a globally it is affected all the uh, global regions so you see here a uh, region 1 and region 2 also can be paid uh, with the help of a region pairing and that would be thousands of hundreds of miles so that's called a uh, region pairing so you can do that but uh, this is where the data will be you no know, uh, residence within that boundary that's what we talked about it so you need to understand here one uh, major takeout would be so the way from the left side to right side when you move it to the solutions you are actually getting more higher and higher availability so the VM itself the normal VM itself is a higher availability but when you go for availability sets you're getting more than that that's a 99.95 when we talk about uh, 99 point double lines then this is what the region level which is the availability zone but when we pair with the within the region to region we are almost getting 100 percentage but microsoft sees that it's the 99.49 so that's the availability when we talk about fault tolerance, a fault tolerance is often built into your cloud services architecture. If so, one component fails, the backup component takes its place. So it's more than high availability what we talk. So uh, this is referred as a fault tolerance and this will, fault tolerance will ensure that your customers aren't impacted when there are unexpected accident occurs. So how we do it is the proactively and reactively so the proactively would be regularly we take the backup of the data and we take the apps or resources whatever it is that we do take the backup and deploy into different uh, availability zones it's not just a one availability zone multiple availability zones and regions so that uh, we would cover more so if you remember in the previous um, this is where you're gonna uh, cover the fault tolerance with the when you deploy for the multiple regions and multiple availability zones right and um, 
load balances across multiple availability zones or regions that's what we talked about it monitoring health of your data apps and that will ensure your resources are healthy so in case if something goes wrong of your applications or maybe your data then uh, we need to you know act on it that's called reactive so when we talk about the reactive here we would uh, restore the data apps and resources to a different availability zone uh, since one of the availability zone is failed so we can uh, fall back to other zone altogether or other regions that way our applications will be available and deploy to a different availability zones or regions um, that's what we talked uh, and uh, by restoring and deploying to different availability zones that would make a more sense for us for the fault tolerance the last topic of the lecture would be the disaster recovery so this disaster recovery talks about uh, to recover anything uh, i mean you need to have that ability to back up and restore the data or your resources when it is needed so that's where our uh, disaster recovery comes into the picture so um, in case of any of the major incidents or non transient or wide scale of failures let's say a region to good failure or uh, and all the traffic is have to be diverted from the region one example so which is not uh, possible the entire region but let's take an example as the highest level got failure and in that situation you need to able to restore that as your uh, specific uh, site recovery should be able to uh, fulfill our requirement similarly in case if some uh, on-premises vms or the infrastructure has down uh, you want to you know restore back to another on-premises that can be done with the disaster recovery services offered by microsoft azure calls azure site recovery and also if you are uh, on-premises to cloud for example your on-premises servers uh, got uh, involved into the disaster and then you might have to reload that server or spin up that server in Azure Cloud. So that can be done with the Azure Site Recovery. Similarly, if your servers are maybe in AWS or Google Cloud and you wanted them, um, bring them back to Azure Cloud. So you can do that. Similarly, you can do from Azure one region to another region, like one Azure subscription to another subscription can be done. So it's all about the disaster recovery. So if you have the backup of the data and uh, with all the possible things, um, possible options that you can get it from the Azure site recovery. I hope this is useful for you. Thank you for watching this.